This is a presentation on how to connect opcsystems.net with OPC servers. With opcsystems.net, there are many different data sources that are possible. You can have OPC clients, .NET applications, databases, Microsoft Excel. All of these have their own separate presentations, which you can find under our training videos page at opcsystems.com. Connecting to OPC servers is the most common data source for opcsystems.net. There are two ways that you can connect to an OPC server using opcsystems.net. One is through the real-time data service that can be configured that can be configured manually through CSV files or programmatically from the free to use OPC systems component. You can also use direct OPC which we'll demonstrate a little bit later in this video directly from your HMI application. Let's start with the configure application that is found commonly under the program group opcsystems.net and here we have the configure OPC systems application. When we first launch this, we see that the instruction videos for each of the product features are available. We're going to go to Configure Tags to define a point. We'll select the service that we want to configure. That can be local or remote. Simply put in an IP address, network node name, or domain name here if you want to remotely configure the tags. You can add groups as a way to organize your data. I'm going to create a group called My Group. I'll go down to select that group, right click on it and select add tag and I'll enter a tag name of my tag. We'll set the data source to OPC item, We'll select the browse button to the right and then select the local connection for the OPC server. Even if you're remotely configuring the tags you'd always select local as the most reliable interface so that the OPC system service has a local connection to the OPC server. Let's browse the Kepware OPC server for the items it has. We'll go down to Channel and Device. And here I have a new tag I've added called Ramp. I'll select OK and Apply Changes. We now have the value coming from that individual OPC item into the real-time data service. If while browsing your OPC item or if you're getting bad data quality from the OPC server, one of the common resolutions is to set the OPC systems data service logon to your local user account. Some OPC servers do not run as a Windows service. The Kepware OPC server that we just connected to runs as a Windows service. So most likely you'll be able to connect to it with a system account. But some OPC servers run as a desktop account and so your operating system needs to have the privilege to be able to send values back from the OPC server to the OPC client that by default runs under the system account as a Windows service. To set the service logon, go to Control Panel, Administrative Tools, and Services. There you'll see a list of all the Windows services installed on your operating system and we'll go down to the OPC Systems Data Service. This is the service that connects to the OPC servers. So we'll first stop that service, right click on it to go to Properties, and select the Logon tab. To set it to a specific account for your desktop, select this account, select Browse, Advanced in the lower left, find now to the right and then select your particular current user that you're logged in with the operating system. Once you've defined that enter the password twice and click OK and start the service again. We can then come back with the configure application and see if we have resolved the problem with the good data quality. I'm going to enable the trend point so that we can perform real-time trending later on the specific point. There are many other attributes to an OPC systems.net tag as far as keeping track of how long something's been on, how many times it's transitioned in a particular time period. Also we have all of the alarm limits and the ability to send a value back to an OPC server. We have a feature uh, called opcroute.net with a training video specifically for that. If you want to write from an HMI application to this tag and have it go on down to the OPC server, this is the only definition that you need to do here. It's just define the data source as an OPC item. When the data source is defined as an OPC item and a write request comes into it, say from a data confirmation of data logging 
recipe management from a database, values from Microsoft Excel, from .NET applications, or from your HMI, either Web, WinForm, or WPF. That write request is converted to a write to the OPC item and sent on down automatically. So you do not need to implement the target feature if you just need to write to this particular OPC item from any of those features. The target feature is only needed if you want to transfer this particular value to a different OPC server or a different OPC item on that server. If we want to change the OPC update rate for the OPC item, that is defined here at the OPC update rate. We'll set it to, say, a tenth of a second. And now we're getting a faster update subscription from the OPC server. If you want to set up multiple tags altogether, the fastest way is to use a CSV import export. You can select the individual group and right click on it to export just the tags underneath of that group or you can export the entire tag configuration using the CSV export method. Another way to set up OPC systems.net tags is to programmatically define them. This is demonstrated under our WinForm example code and in that example code you'll find a form called form configure CSV with an import method for the tags. When you want to save your tag configuration you would click the save button save it to the file that you would like and then under configure options we'll select the local service and here the first selection is the default tag configuration file to load when the service restarts this is useful if you restart your computer that it automatically loads that tag configuration for you now you can use this tag in any of the client applications I'm gonna launch the WPF dashboard example application and in the trend window what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the pens to add another point to the trend window. I'll select the local service and here I have the new tag, my group, and my tag. I'll add that to the configuration. And now we are trending that specific point of the ramp signal. We can see that here in the back. If I wanted to add another point I want to show you how you would directly connect to an OPC server without adding an OPC systems.net tag we call this feature the direct OPC interface so in any of the client applications whether it be an HMI uh, trending data logging recipe management you can use the direct OPC interface without defining tags here I'll select the Kepware OPC server again and select channel and again device and ramp and here with direct OPC you have the option of setting the OPC update rate determining the data type that you would like if you don't know you can use object type for a trend window it's typically a double float and you notice it automatically builds this long tag string for you we'll select add pen and we'll change this pen color to red instead of blue so we can see the difference. When I click OK it tells the service to begin automatically scanning that point for the OPC item and the OPC server is now sending that those new values for that new item back to us from the uh, OPC server. If you have any other questions about how to connect different data sources to OPC systems.net visit us on the web at opcsystems.com